Hi there, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing really well today. And hi there, welcome if you're new. I'm Kay. I love talking about all things slow, intentional living. I am 30 weeks pregnant the day I am filming this. And this video is gonna be a get it done with me, but it's gonna be nesting style. Oh boy, do I have some nesting jobs to do. I am so excited to share this video with you all. We do a variety of things, but mostly things I have been putting off for ages. Um, and I'm really trying to do things as naturally as possible. So I also share a really good all-purpose cleaner, especially bathroom cleaner in this video. So I really hope you find it helpful. I hope it inspires you if you are like me and just need to get off your bum and do the things that need doing. Let me tell you, it feels so much better for doing this. I'm filming this intro after I film the video. And I woke up this morning and thought, oh, I just feel like a weight has been lifted. The energy in the house is completely different because it's just those jobs that just weigh on your mind, you know. So definitely make a list if you haven't already of all the jobs you need to tackle after you watch this video. But yes, let's get into the video, shall we? And uh, see what I get up to. So the first job on my list of jobs was to sweep our alleyway. If you've been with me a while, you'll know this gets so slippy in the winter. So staying on top of all of this stuff that the birds pick out of our drain pipes is really really helpful and stops the moss from growing it's already so green and i'm just picking out any weeds that have grown as well it does take a little bit of time but it's so worth keeping up with we are going to get the gutters cleared once it's not nesting season anymore but we do still have some little birds up there so i don't want to disturb them we'll just wait till the right time of year to do that so i'm just doing this and trying to um tell Echo not to come down the alleyway. They know they're not allowed to come down here and he was really trying his luck and testing my patience. <laughs> so I shoo him out of the way and then crack on and finish off this job. I've been meaning to do this for so long but I just, I just never remember to be honest. So it felt good to get this done and now I know our postman won't slip on a rainy day if I'm out. Next up is the pear tree, another one of those jobs that's been on my list for a while. I noticed the pears had started to drop the other day and thought it's time I need to get some of these off before they get wasps in them and all fall to the ground. I actually learned a trick this year that I never knew. If you bend the pear up and it snaps off, it's ready to go and if it doesn't, it's not. So I'm just showing the difference here. This one was not ready to go. So I'm taking them off because last year we did not make the most of this pear tree. A lot of our family love pears. I love pears if you've got any great recipes let me know but definitely going to be making a pear crumble and having pear in my porridge in the morning I'm just completely being attacked by this pear tree it's done so well this year there are so many pears but it's also struggling under the weight <laughs> Next up we've got my trusty weeds. I want to take a second for this weed here. It's really outdone itself. These are the ones that I just never want to do. I just look around and think, do you know what? Tomorrow the day is coming and I just never get there. So I thought today I better do them. Before that one grew any taller. Um, it's nearly as tall as a sunflower we've got and that's saying something. So I'm just taking a bit of time here to weed. If you know any way to stop the weeds coming back that's natural and won't harm my cats, please let me know. I don't mind having grass between the flagstones, but I do not like all the weeds and they're just so thick. The roots are so hard to pull out. So if there's a little tool or a gadget, let me know because I'd be so interested in that. Next up, I'm going to show you how I'm cleaning my washing machine. I've got some bicarbonate of soda and vinegar, putting the bicarb straight into the washing machine and the vinegar goes in the drawer. I really wanted to do this so that I could wash all of our little boy's clothes and his nappies without worrying about it being gross. I've had the most disgusting washing machine ever in the past and I really try now to keep on top of it. So I'm just finding the hottest cycle and the longest cycle I can and popping it on. Echo is fascinated. <laughs> Now I'm showing you how I make my 
all purpose, well mostly bathroom cleaner while I've got everything out. So equal parts water and equal parts vinegar and then I'm just popping some essential oils in as well. The ones I really like to mask the vinegar scent are eucalyptus, I like peppermint and I like lemongrass. I also really really like lavender and tea tree is great as well for the bathroom to help to stop the mold spores. So I do 40 drops all together and then just a few drops of the spearmint as well. Pop in a dash of washing up liquid which really helps. Give it a mix and that is it. It's literally amazing. You'll see for yourself in a second how good this is at cleaning glass. It's literally a game changer. It smells quite good, like it's not amazing, but it's fine and it's natural and I think that's the main thing. So really recommend this. I'm just reusing an old bottle that I had as well. This footage was filmed many, many hours later, but I thought I would just make it make sense. So the washing machine cycle had finished. It was on for about three hours. I'm now just cleaning out the drum. So I sprayed some of that spray in there. I'm spraying it in the seal, which is stained, but you know what, that's fine. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I'm just making sure I keep on top of it now and then giving everything a really, really good wipe and disinfect just to keep on top of it. I really am trying to make sure I air out our washing machine now every time I use it, something I never knew about. I feel like when you get your own house, you have a lot of steep learning curves and this has been one of them, keeping on top of this washing machine because it was already second hand to us when we got it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's doing well, bless it, for its age. So I'm just giving it all a wipe, getting rid of any extra grub and hairs and god knows what that collects on this because they do get disgusting don't they they're real workhorses i let that soak in the seal and then i'm just wiping it all away and um, like i say it doesn't get rid of the stain but it does really help to stop it from getting moldy and i'm just doing this as well i'm draining the filter which is something i never knew how to do <laughs> until the day i needed to do it the cats had pushed a few biscuits under here so i like to keep on top of this as well so that i don't have any moldy issues under there one thing i would do that i didn't do is i would put a towel down before you take the plug out i don't know what possessed me not to do that this time but i didn't and it was a bit of a disaster so definitely do that and then I find one of these little oven trays is so good for collecting the water um, but you'll see my mistake in a second I suddenly panic and think oh no there's water everywhere <laughs> and then I thought oh you've just got to send it now it's too late <laughs> but yeah it's good to clean your filter just in case there's anything that's got mixed up in there that shouldn't be it really helps to keep your washing machine healthy and happy ours was actually fine um, it does quite a good job thankfully and I'm really careful with what we do put in the washing machine but I know from experience if you have small children <laughs> or husbands um, who have you know lots of coins in the pockets and things you can soon have issues and even me if I accidentally put a hair grip in there making sure I turn this very tightly so that I don't get any leaks and then just popping the bottom tray back on feels like such a boring mundane task but it really does help to keep on top of it then the dreaded drawer oh nasty nasty <laughs> again another job i really am trying to keep more on top of but i just really wanted to do today so i've been kind of saving it for this video i suppose but just giving it a good spray with that cleaner once more popping it into the sink with some vinegar and some boiling hot water a little bit of washing up liquid i just let that soak for a few hours and then i just gave it a really good clean i love these little bottle brushes for this they work so well at getting in all the nooks and crannies because I don't know about you guys, but this actual washing machine is so <laughs> frustrating to clean. I clean my dad's washing machine as well. His is nowhere near as annoying as this. There's so many little holes and gaps that, you know, things can collect in. So just trying to keep on top of it as best as I can. But I know at least if it's soaked in the vinegar that we're good. You know, it's bacteria free and I feel a lot better about the washing machine. Next up I am doing the laundry for my little boy. These are all the inserts and liners for his nappies which I've been meaning to do for a while. They really needed pre-washing which is something you have to do with reusable nappies and I just wanted to make sure the washing machine was really clean before I did that. So I popped them on a spin at 40 for about 20 minutes. 
um, for, I did this about three times so that they were ready to go and then I could pop them all out to dry. But this was another job that I just needed to make time for and do and I'm so pleased it's done now. Next up we're moving on to the hob. I really tortured myself this day but these needed doing so much. So I just took all of the gas hobs off, all of the bits that would come out and then moved on to the oven as well. The oven was grim. The oven, oh, I don't think anyone likes to clean that oven but I really do not like our oven. It's so old, it's so annoying to clean but you know what, it needs doing so let's just do it. We love a stone baked pizza and it just makes so much mess everywhere. Pretty ashamed of the wire racks that were in here but showing it because maybe one of you out there can relate. I'm using soda crystals for the first time in my life and I was so impressed by these. Again, another more natural approach. Highly recommend, it is such a good job. So I just mixed some into some hot water, popped them in and I literally left them in for about three hours. I think the longer you can leave them, the easier it is. But I was so impressed with what I managed to get off for the short time that I actually had them in there. Putting them in the bath is so much easier because you don't need to worry about turning them. Um, and I, yeah, I just literally put everything that I could think of in the bath and it worked so well. You can already see it lifting the grease and the grime. And then I decided to take our shower seal off as well, which was also gross. <laughs> Um, things just get so gross when you shower every day and then I'm closing the cats out important to do if you've got pets or small children because you don't want them going in the bath with the soda crystals and then popping a few soda crystals on any greasy spots in the oven and then pop some water in as well with some so I could just give it a bit of a scrub to be honest. I've never cleaned the oven with this before, this was new to me, but I was actually really impressed with how good a job it did. I'd often use the pink stuff, if you know what that is. It's just like a little scrubbing paste and that always does me well, but this was actually really easy and I liked how simple it was and also super cheap as well. So I'm just using a scrubby daddy to scrub this on. Then I'm going in again. I put these soda crystals on and I left this to soak for a little while longer. As I said, I filmed this kind of over an entire day, but I'm clumping all the footage together so it makes more sense. Look at that water. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> Moving on to our shower screen now. Um, we are jumping around a bit, but I just want to make sure it, you know, it was kind of in chronological order. Giving it all a good spray. Then I'm rubbing it in with this little bath scourer thing I've got, which is gentle on glass. Really, really getting in there. Um, trying to get rid of the lime scale. We live in a super hard water area and we struggle so much with lime scale. It's the bane of my life, <laughs> um, but it needs doing, you know, and letting it build up just does not help anything. So giving it all a good scrub and then buffing it off with one of my microfibers. And then I go in after with this green one. I'll leave it linked down below if I can find it. I just got it from Tesco. It's literally the best thing ever for glass. I would never use anything different. It's fantastic. It does such a good job and you don't even need any product with it. Just water does fine. But for this job, it did amazing. And I was so, so happy with the cleaner as well. It just literally, it's worked better than any kind of product or thing I've ever bought for the shower and I will never change back now. Even the stainless steel was spotless. Moving on to these, this was a much harder task than I actually anticipated. It took a lot of elbow grease and the majority of my energy for the day, <laughs> but it was so satisfying. I really hope this footage shows you how satisfying it was to get rid of all of that grime. I will never let them get this bad again and I am tempted in a few weeks time to do this all over again and try and get the remainder off. Um, I did definitely run out of motivation <laughs> and willpower by the end. I was so tired from leaning over the bath, but it was so worth it and yeah, just really addictive. So if your trays are looking a bit grim, definitely give this a go. I don't think I've ever, apart from washing them with washing up liquid and soap, you know, I've never properly deep cleaned these uh, since we moved in and who knows if they were even done before we moved in. So this just felt like a great thing to get done. They do just get so grotty with all the oils and just being in the oven all the time, I suppose. My bath, 
look at the state of my bath. I'd only just cleaned this the day before, so I was pretty upset, <laughs> but it was fine. You know, I just gave everything a rinse down and a good spray and it was good as new again. I was having a bit of a nightmare trying to figure out which one was which. I don't know if any of you have this problem. They're all such similar sizes, but I got there in the end. I definitely left one in the bath, so I went and got that after I filmed this footage, but put it all back together and I was super happy with how clean they'd come up. I mean, they're a bit rusty because it's a very old kitchen, but it does the job. And then yeah, just going in, giving everything a clean, cleaning that gross seal of ours. And yeah, it just, the bathroom, felt so much better and it was just so nice to have got these really annoying boring jobs done if you need to get these jobs done yourself give yourself a day and just potter on you know a lot of these things take time and if you've got time you can get them done really really quickly and really easy it just takes a bit of willpower to actually commit to doing it but look how much better that seal looks oh made me happy and then I'm going in to the torturous task of cleaning the oven once again, oh, I feel like I have to do this so often these days, but it needs doing, you know, it is a workhorse, this oven of ours, and I'm grateful to have it in my life. And I recently figured out how to take the glass out, which was, yeah, definitely an amazing, amazing thing to have figured out because for so long I could not figure it out and it makes such a difference, being able to get between the glass and actually do a proper clean. So I'm just literally going to use the same spray that I'd been using and a microfiber, just buffing everything out, making sure it's all nice and clean, getting rid of any residue because you don't want any extra residue in there. You know, when you're cooking food, it needs to be very safe. But look at that, it's gleaming. I was very, very, very happy with myself. And I'm just using a vinegar spray, just pure vinegar spray to clean the front of the glass here. And it just makes it come up so shiny. I even describe to you how much better the oven feels. It feels like a new oven, which is saying something because it must be as old as me. <laughs> Next is my cast iron. If you've been with me a while, I bought this when I lived in New Zealand and I brought it home in my backpack. But look at this poor thing, it's had a sad life. It was in the loft for a while and I just have had it in the drawer wanting to clean it for so long and I just have never got around to it. Again, it's one of those jobs that just takes time. So I found a person online, I'll leave a link down below, who's a homemaker as well and uses cast iron. And I thought, you know what, Kay, it's time. You need to sort it out. I loved using my cast iron. So yeah, it's just a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water again. Then you're just gonna leave it to soak for an hour, a few hours, however long you want. And then you're gonna just sprinkle some bicarbonate of soda on it once again. You'll see I'm just using the same ingredients over and over again, but these are all you need to clean going in with a steel wool and just giving it a really good scrub. You can see all the rust and gross come off. It's just what happens with cast iron if you don't use it and you don't treat it properly. Um, it looks so much better. And then I really loved this time lapse I put on of it drying off. So popping it onto the stove on a low heat just to let it dry out properly all the way through, which is super important for seasoning it. Once it's all dry, this is going to seem kind of pointless. Um, you're going to put some oil, I used coconut oil, onto a paper towel. I actually ran out, so I just had to use normal tissue. But yeah, just wiping it all on, um, giving it a really, really good coat, doing this the whole way around the pan. Then I just used a microfiber to buff it off, which seems counterintuitive, but trust me, it makes a lot of sense. Once you start doing it, you realize. So you're just literally gonna do this until the tissue is clean. You'll see what I mean in a second. It takes a while, but it's so worth it.
this is the difference, this is every tissue I used and you can see this final one, the colour is completely different to the start so it really works and then you're just going to pop the oven, I can't remember the temperature so I'll pop it on the screen, you're just going to pop it in there for an hour to bake basically and that will really help to season the pan and get it ready to go and then I just thought I would show you some footage of it in action, cooking my egg, I just popped some butter in, to be honest I think the pan was still a bit hot so I definitely burnt my butter but oh well, look at that. Who needs non-stick? Not me. <laughs> very, very happy to have my cast iron pan back in my life. Then my last job of the day felt like such a good thing to finish with was hanging out all of the nappy liners and just, I just popped them inside. I thought, you know what, it was cracking on into the day and I really didn't want to put them all out on the line to bring them all back in again. So I was just sorting through them, popping them on there. And then I sorted out the wipes from the nappy liners because the wipes are so much smaller. I shouldn't need to dry the wipes in the future. The wipes can go straight into the solution when he is here. But until he's here, I just want to make sure everything's clean. Um, and this was just such a big load of laundry to get done and just felt like such a big accomplishment. If you've never seen one of these before and you live in the UK or somewhere very wet in the winter months and even the summer months to be honest, I definitely recommend this. I'll leave it linked down below but there's so many you can get, it just makes it so easy. It does take up a bit of space but it's so much better for your house than using a radiator. The last job, that is not really like a job that I'm gonna do, it's a job I always put off. It's having my hair cut. I have such a love-hate relationship with having my hair cut, but I feel like it needs to happen and I'm hoping this is the last time I'll get it cut. I usually have it done like every three months, but I'm usually pretty useless, so it's usually every six months. But I noticed recently it's getting really thin on the ends and yeah, just a bit frazzled, so <laughs> I think it's time and I really hate the way it falls when it's straight, it's just so like limp. So I'll show you the back so you can see. But I think they say once you can see through the ends, that's when it's time to have it cut. So that's what I'm going to go do this afternoon and that will be my final job, so I will see you when it's done. Ta-da! <laughs> Feels so much better. I can't even explain the difference that having your hair cut makes. Oh, it feels so much lighter, so much nicer. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see much of a difference. There we go. She just took the very ends off and it's always nice. Um, I love my hairdresser and just feels good. You know, it's one of those jobs I just put off and put off and put off and then I never get round to go in and it's so much better for your hair to have it cut every so often. Um, I used to go years without having it cut and it's just one of those jobs I just don't want to do but actually it's so easy to just book in and do it. So I decided to just have a cut today um, to save time and oh, I feel like a new woman, honestly. My house feels better, I feel better. I really hope you found this video inspiring and motivating. And if you did and you were hoping it wouldn't do that to you, I'm sorry if you're about to have to go blitz your house or go and make a list of all the jobs that are wearing you down. But I am, I'm happy for you because it does make such a difference to your mental health and just your physical well-being as well. You know, just getting those jobs done, getting them ticked off and I'm really trying to get all the jobs done while I have energy. Some days are good, some days are bad. Thankfully I've had a few good energy days and been able to crack on. I thought I would be dead to the world today but I actually feel okay which is nice, uh, a nice surprise. But yes, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did and you want to watch more Get It Done With Me videos I'll leave my little playlist of them all down below. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all again in my next video. Bye!